with the truck um, as a Russian Canadian and with uh, very little money and two days later I'm back in Canada I have no truck I have a check for 18,000 bucks and I'm not a Russian Canadian I'm now Uzbek Canadian now let me explain to you how this happened so basically I drove on Thursday very slowly you know just trying to preserve fuel uh, because I didn't want to buy you know too much fuel and I ended up in uh, Cortland Cortland New York went to a hotel for the night and then the next morning had a nice breakfast and my truck was already you know all ready for the ownership transfer and then so the next morning I just drove three hours to a Walmart in uh, Suffern uh, I think it's yeah New York just uh, one exit past the I-287 of I-87 and I waited for the buyer because he was working he drives uh, he was driving someone else's truck so he was working and he said sit tight till like four o'clock and I was there around two and so I went, I went bought some groceries you know went around the neighborhood and, um, and then I was talking on the phone to this uh, trucking company you know about uh, hiring with them and when I see a cop pulls in front of me and I recognize the guy that uh, you know I met last time in Pennsylvania when we signed uh, signed the deal and I'm sorry for my appearance but uh, you know I spent the night on the bus and I probably slept like three hours and this little hat here really helped because it was cold <laughs> on the way back but anyway so we signed a, in another agreement this one with uh, his company like his company is buying my truck not him uh, as a individual and he gave me the check and it looked okay like a certified bank check and I just told him you know what to look for in the truck just gave him some notes I made in the night before kind of like tips you know like for example my truck I don't know maybe it's all cat equipped trucks but they all like um, fresh fuel filters every month you know? so stuff like that they just gave, gave us some pointers and then we just basically I followed him to his parking area we, oh then we no yeah I followed him to the parking area where he's gonna keep the truck and um, I showed him what the truck can do like he was in front of me and I just pushed the accelerator you know and I passed him <laughs> the guy was looking at me like what's he doing and then he shows me a thumbs up like he uh, he understood what I was trying to do like show him how much power the truck has and uh, and then we t I took off all the all the signs of the truck of the doors and you'll see at the end of uh, my picture and if you look closely you'll see that the door of the yellow truck has no decals no logos so I took off that all off because Landstar wants even pieces of it like proof that you know you removed uh, the stuff and that you can no longer work under under the authority and I removed the New York uh, permit if the permits then I took off my uh, uh, pre-pass transponder my easy pass transponder and that's it we looked around everything was cool and I, I left him the TomTom -tom GPS and I left him the uh, the lock for the actually very nice safety feature you know you can lock your brakes on the dashboard I uh, you know I left him that I think I paid like 30 bucks to Landstar when I was uh, getting hired and that's it then we just got into his car I took all my belongings and like on the way he was giving me a ride to the Port Authority bus terminal and on the way there we stopped at uh, at the Chinese buffet restaurant had some nice food and the guy paid for it and we even had a drink and, uh, and then that's it by the time we reached um, the bus terminal it was like uh, eight o'clock and the traffic was brutal because this is right you know in the middle of Manhattan downtown New York and these cab drivers they keep honking all the time 
I don't know, like most other places, honking is illegal unless it's an emergency. These guys like purr, 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 you know, drives you crazy. Anyway, so the guy drops me off at this uh, bus terminal, and I know I took a bus before from US, only a train, but then mostly it's a truck, of course. And uh, I just went, I found a ticket uh, agency. Uh, Greyhound because we researched uh, the night I researched the night before I knew that there was a bus going all the way to Toronto Canada And yeah, I went there I stood in line and just got my ticket show them they, they require uh, you to show them the passport And it was uh, 83 bucks no changes nothing direct straight bus and it was leaving at uh, 845 and So I had like 20 minutes left because of the time I spent in the in the lineup but that terminal, it's like six stories high and maybe like three stories below the ground. So thanks to, to some people, I managed to find my, my gate because it's like the ticket was pretty confusing, you know. So I, find, I managed to find my gate and, um, and just got on the bus. Oh, but one funny thing happened is that, uh, so I took off my easy pass transponder you know for tolls and I put it in my backpack and, and when we're driving in his car this guy took the some cash out of the bank machine because we needed to go over the George Washington Bridge and I think he said it's like 13 bucks for cars and I'm sitting in the passenger seat and we pull into this gate and and the ladies and he gives the he extends his hand with cash to lay to the lady in the booth and she looks at him like he's an idiot, you know, and she says, do you have a, do you have a pre-pass? <laughs> and he says, no. And then she looks at me, you have a pre-pass? And I'm like, yeah, I think I do in my bag. It's like my old pre-pass from my truck. And she, she shows to the, you know, that sign with the green and red lights. She says, it's green. The money was already taken. <laughs> I said, how was it taken? This vehicle is not like his car, his uh, Hyundai. You know, it's not registered. How you guys take money? Well, it's already done. So he gave me some cash, you know. And, but anyway, so on the bus, and the bus was driving like, the guy was driving like crazy, and actually I was, you know, kind of watching, and he's like doing all these rolling stops, you know, like typical New York City driver, you know. Never once I saw him come to a full stop at a stop sign. <laughs> all stop signs are rolling stops, you know. But, you know, and of course the speed limit for, for buses is uh, the same as for cars, so this guy was flying. So we left at 8.45, so we fought our way through the uh, heavy traffic in New York City. And then uh, two hours later we were in uh, Gibson, or New Milford, Pennsylvania, where the Flying J is. Uh, and then next stop was Syracuse, New York. And then Buffalo, we stopped at the airport to drop some uh, unhappy lady at the airport like at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and there was no one there. She just, the only one, you know, getting off. And then the other stop was uh, Buffalo downtown. And then we went to the border, probably spent like 40 minutes at the border. Oh, and at the border, the guy says, uh, customs guy says, okay, uh, how many nights in the States? I said two. All right, where did you go? So I say, oh, uh, I sold my truck. I went to uh, deliver the truck to the buyer, and now I have a check that I have to declare because it's over ten thousand dollars. And I thought, now you know, the sirens would go off, guys with dogs and machine guns will show up. But this guy looks at me and he says, "Is it endorsed?" I mean, what do you? I said, "What do you mean?" Oh, is it signed on the back? I said, "No." And he says, "Is it? Is it uh, written to you?" Like, is your name on the front so that only you can cash it? I said, yeah. He said, okay, have a good day. Cool. <laughs> and then we, we drove to the bus, uh, took us, uh, the next stop was Niagara Falls. Uh, I think like 20 minutes and then uh, Toronto. $83. $83 all the way from Manhattan to downtown Toronto. But of course it was not comfortable. It was very difficult to sleep, so I just know, maybe I got like three hours of sleep. Uh, but there was some Wi-Fi, there was no TV, but there was a washroom in the back, like very tiny washroom with no, with no uh, 
water just you know toilet but the funny thing is that uh, we arrive at this depot like coach terminal bus terminal on Dundas and uh, Queen I think in Toronto and of course in New York City these buses run you know like the one this one was 845 the next one was like at 10 o'clock like here this was just under before eight o'clock and uh, I went I found the ticket agency again and I said so I need to get to Cambridge and the guy says, well the bus just left and it was actually sold out at seven o'clock I said was when when is the next one he says 11 and I said no no way I'm waiting but I said what there's no more buses between now and then he says no because today's Saturday I said forget it I just uh, stepped outside and there was a Starbucks there I got some Starbucks you know wash my face brush my teeth finally and went to look for a cab but I was not sure that I, I'm, I was going to take a cab because you know I didn't want to spend like five hundred dollars because it's still uh, I think it's like 45 miles from Toronto to Cambridge and I come out of the terminal and there's a taxi cab just driving slowly by and he's looking you know for potential victims and he looks at me okay I wave to him he pulls over and I say you do only local or you can go far and he says oh get in we go anywhere okay and then he says uh, where you want to go I said I need to go to Cambridge Ontario how much will it be and this guy like a black guy and he says uh, like a young uh, or you know Midwest guy and he says well I cannot see can you look up on this sheet how much it is and he gives me a sheet all torn but it's like all printed names of towns in Ontario and he says that's what the government tells us to charge we cannot charge more but we cannot charge less and it's so dark and the letters are so tiny I said wait I cannot see it either <laughs> I, said, I said hold on let me take my smartphone and start the camera and look at the text you know when the camera focuses it's easy to see or you can take a picture and then enlarge <laughs> so I look at it and I can see it clearly through the camera it's 226 226 dollars said wait it says 226 for uh, 70 kilometers 45 miles I said are you kidding I just spent 83 bucks on a bus from New York City to Toronto which is like 450 miles you know and he says 226 no that cannot be it should be more because this is very far all right and he keeps looking and squeezing his eyes and he cannot see you know and then I said okay I'll, I'll take a picture and I'll show it to you and so I um, we, oh he started driving and we went where there was lots of light like and uh, off you know from out of the bridge because there's a whole bunch of bridges over there like overpasses and it became light and my camera was able to focus so I took a picture of that section of his little torn sheet and it says Cambridge 226 the guy like he was not happy I'm telling you like because I don't know it took us maybe half an hour there was hardly any traffic on 401 we just drove to Cambridge uh, so I gave him some tip you know like big tip he took me all the way to my uh, to my pickup truck and uh, and that's it so now I'm back home so of course the first order of the day was to uh, see if I got a fake check you know that was my big concern because I checked it yeah the money is there but you know it's a money it is a US bank you never know so I went to my bank and I explained to them you know what I did like I sold the truck and I gave them the phone number for the bank I said this is how you can check if if it's a legitimate check there'll be automatic option there to if you're a merchant press this and then you punch in the, you know check number uh, the amount and the account number from the check and it the computer on the phone tells you if it's legitimate or not and I did that before and it said yeah the money is there so so they did this put the check in into my account no problem and the lady says the manager like they had to call a manager she says this is a very unusual transaction I said what's so unusual it's like 18,000 bucks right if I this is a transport truck we're talking about right if I had uh, if I sold I don't know an excavator or even SUV like you know expensive SUV the check would have been four hundred thousand dollars right eighteen thousand bucks and she says no but it's unusual for you for your account 
Well, I said, get used to it, you know. <laughs> I just got a RGM trailer. So times are changing. Anyway, so she deposited the money. We're all good. And uh, one guy, thanks to uh, this guy, I think Mark from Quebec, uh, bought my dash cam, that uh, Blue Tiger. He sent me the money, and I just today I sent him the dash cam, so I hope he like it. And then, uh, oh, one thing I wanted to say is that, uh, that maybe someone might uh, find useful is that, you know, selling a used truck, especially a 10-year-old truck with, uh, you know, 825,000 miles on it, even though it's a great truck, but, you know, lots of times people don't see the value, you know. And I spent maybe, I don't know, 700 bucks on advertising, you know, truck paper in the States, uh, truck and trailer in Canada. Uh, what is it that auction auction magazine in Canada uh, I pay to Kijiji like it's like our Craigslist but it's free but then you can pay and then they put your ad on the top you know it shows in that gallery that everybody sees and nothing I well I, I had two calls maybe the one guy says oh what kind of axles does it have 40 or f super 40 it says 40 oh okay Thank you. Boom. Then the other guy called. He says, uh, does it have 46,000 pound uh, tandems? I said, no, regular. Okay, thank you. And finally, the guy who bought my truck is my YouTube viewer. So, turns out, turns out he was uh, following my channel and he saw that I was taking good care of the truck. How I did all these repairs and modifications and stuff like that. And he just sent me a direct message, you know, through messages on YouTube. And I sent him my email, he sent me his phone, we talked, and that's what what uh, brought this deal together, you know. Not paid advertising, but basically social sites. So it's not what you know, it's who you know, you know. Or what they say, it's not how much money you have. So I spent lots of money on advertising, it did not work. But through YouTube, I was able to sell a truck. So... And it's all, yeah, it's a plus I did that video if you guys saw, right? Truck for sale, you know, it never hurts to spread the word. So that's my suggestion to, you know, anyone who wants to sell like an older truck, just uh, don't forget about social websites like, you know, Facebook, YouTube, stuff like that. Uh, sometimes you can get more results than from paid advertising. Okay, so this is my update. I still don't have a job. I'm talking to a few companies, but now it's Saturday, so you know, everything's closed. But I mean, I've been talking to a few companies, but uh, uh, the plan is maybe I'll go f work for someone, like for a company driver, you know, for a month uh, until my truck arrives, because it's still a long time off, you know, because it was delayed. And uh, stay tuned for more videos. I think uh, tomorrow I'm, I want to go to Niagara Falls. And maybe do some shocking, intense videos of the falls from the Canadian side using my uh, you know, new GoPro Hero 3. Thanks for watching. I'm Sergey Drachev in Cambridge, Ontario.